Hi, I'm here to tell you another story. Scout is here with me off camera. We'll see if she turns up on camera or not, or if she's gonna behave herself today. This story is about computers. Computers were invented a long time before we think of them, but they were very simple. Um, in World War II, they were used to decrypt or break codes that the Germans used, uh, but they were very small. When computers, like what we think of computers that can do all the kinds of things that we think of, began to be used, they were enormous. Think about the gym at school and think about, you know, there's all the area where the floor is and then there's that area where the bleachers are. And then there's the area where the bathrooms and the stage are. And then there's the hallway behind that gym where like Ms. Ryu's classroom is, that whole big hallway. One computer would have taken up all of that space. And it was a very delicate machine. It had to be in a climate control room. Uh, it couldn't get too hot. It couldn't get too cold. It couldn't get any dust in it at all, which in my house would just kill it right out. But okay, there we are. And they were hugely expensive and huge, and they used all kinds of it, huge amounts of, of electricity. So, whoops, basically only governments and maybe really, really, really big companies had computers at that point. <coughs> they also didn't have a keyboard like what you type on now, like what we know as a computer. They used punch cards, which were like, maybe this big, kind of like an index card. Thank you, Scout. Kind of like an index card that originally you had to punch holes in, in, a, in so that the computer would read, the light would go through those holes and the computer would read, you know, what spot the light went through and eventually became like the, like a Scantron where you would, um, or like your star um, answer document where you would bubble in certain places and the computer would read those like it reads your answers on the star test and that's how it would know what to do. There were all these rows and columns of data and it would say, okay, this is in this point, that means this. And so if you messed up and put your little uh, bubbled in circle in the wrong place, you messed up the whole computer program. It was a nightmare. Then the space program happened. You read a little bit about the space program and they had to make computers smaller to be able to go into the rockets so that they could have computers that would help with what they call telemetry, which is the navigation and all of that sort of thing that the rockets would need to do, the astronauts would need to do. So the computers had to get smaller and they kept getting smaller and smaller and smaller as things tend to do, you know. And look at cell phones, they used to be, well, yeah, that doesn't work for y'all. But they used to be really big and then they got smaller and now they're getting bigger again. I don't know what's up with that. But things tend to, when they, they first made, they, they're usually really large, but then they tend to get smaller and smaller and smaller because it's easier to use and cheaper to make. So eventually it got to the point where computers were small enough that somebody said, hey, what if we sell these computers to people and make all kinds of money like that? And so the first computer that we got, and it was pretty early on, I can remember, I was in about the eighth grade, so that would have been about 1977 or 78, depending on when it was in the, in the, in the calendar year. And my mom came wagging at home and it was in a box, flat box, about like this. And when you open it up, it was a keyboard and a couple of wires. That's all that this computer was. It did not have the monitor. It doesn't look like the computers y'all used to see, and not like certainly not like laptops, and not even like the desktop computers that we have at, at school or you may have at your home. It didn't look anything like that. It did not have a hard drive, so you couldn't save anything onto the computer. It was the the keyboard that you hooked up to your television set. And that was your monitor. And then there was um, another wire that hooked up to a cassette recorder. If you've seen the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, you've seen that, that little Walkman that the guy had, that um, the Star-Lord had that was about this big, and it had a cassette tape in it, and he was listening to music on the cassette tape. Well, the programs for this computer were on cassette tapes. And so you would have to hook your cassette recorder up to the computer that hooked up to the television 
And that's how you loaded the programs in. And so you would turn on the, the recorder, the tape recorder, and it would play back the tape. <coughs> and it would go, rah, 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 rah. it was weird sound there. And that was the computer loading its data in. And it didn't take very long. It was only because they were really, really short programs compared to what we can run, with, run now. But like I said, you couldn't save anything. There was no hard drive. So all, basically all we did with it was we played games. The games that we played were different than the games that y'all have. You have these cool graphics and the pictures, and it looks almost like real people. There were no pictures. There were no graphics at all. These were text-based games, which means that they were words. And so the, the game would start, and it would tell you the story, and then it would ask you to do something, and you would have to type in a command. Thank you, Scout. Yes. And my brother is two years younger than I am, and we would play. And one of us would get to play in the morning on, the, on Saturday, and one of us would get to play in the afternoon on Saturday because we had to, goodness knows we couldn't share. So we had to take turns. Thank you, Scout. But the other one would always sit and watch. And our favorite game, oh, there, there were all kinds of games. There was one that was about a vampire, and there was one that was about um, a dragon, and there was one that was about uh, something to do with an airplane, but I can't remember I can't remember that one. We didn't like that one very much. But our favorite one was the pirate adventure. Because, you know, who doesn't love pirates, right? So we would start off and you would be on a ship and you would get off the ship. And remember, none of this is pictures. It's all just words. And you would get off the ship and you would go onto this island and you would start finding things. And it's a pirate adventure. So you figure at some point you're going to have to dig for treasure, right? So you find a shovel, you get the shovel, take the shovel with you and you're walking along. You find a bucket, you might need a bucket, so take the bucket. You find a sword, probably definitely going to need a sword. You found a torch, found something to light the torch with. And then we found a mongoose. Now, I don't know if you know what a mongoose is, but a mongoose is sort of like, have you ever seen a ferret? They're about, you know, two feet long, maybe a foot and a half long, and they're little skinny things, and they're kind of, they're in the weasel family, but ferrets, something, sometimes the ferrets people keep as pets, <coughs> and a mongoose is in that same family, the, the weasel family, but a mongoose is from India, and mongoose Mongooses, mongoose, whatever. More, the mongoose was de it developed for one specific thing. It can kill cobras. It is really, really good at killing cobras. And cobras are really bad things to have around if you're, you know, living in India. You don't want those in your house, you know. So people would try to get mongooses to live around their houses and stuff so that they would help kill the cobras. So got my mongoose. So you figure you've got this mongoose. Sooner or later, you're going to find a snake, right? So you walk and you're going along, you're going along. And oh, all this time that we're playing this game, I have an uncle who's nine years older than I am, and he's playing the same game. So every now and then he would call us on the phone, and these were not cordless phones. They had the cords, and you were stuck to them, you know, and so you're typing and talking like this. It was terrible. And he's singing this song about, you know, I've got my mongoose, and he's like, I found a mongoose, and we're like, I, so did I. I found a mongoose, and so he's happy, and we're happy, and we're walking along, and he's singing. He made up songs, and he would sing a song about the mongoose. It was a very strange song. And he was excited and we were excited. And so we'd hang up and then we'd play for a while and then we'd call each other and talk about what was going on. So eventually you come to a building and go in the building and it's dark. So you light your torch and you're looking around, you got your torch, you're holding up, you're, you're, you're imagining all of this because it's not really happening. So you've got your torch and you're holding your torch up and you're looking all around and over in the corner, <clears throat> where it's dark, there's this giant basket, and the lid starts to rise up off the basket. What do you think's in the basket? It's got to be a snake, right? So you get ready, and the lid comes up, and there's this giant snake, and it comes up, and it raises up its hood, and it's a cobra. Well, you know what to do with a cobra, because you've got a mongoose, right? So you step up, you take your mongoose, and you throw your mongoose at the cobra. And the cobra bites it and it dies because it turns out it wasn't a mongoose, it was a squirrel. 
So now you're all upset and you're screaming, oh my gosh, it wasn't a mongoose and the phone rings and it's my uncle and he's screaming, it wasn't a mongoose. And I'm like, I know. And he's like, it was a squirrel. And I'm like, I know. And he's like, I'm dead. And I'm like, me too. We were very sad. So you have to start the game. And my brother's sitting behind me laughing because you know he didn't get killed. And now he knows it's not a mongoose. So the next time you play the game, you don't pick up the mongoose because you know it's not really a mongoose. The game goes on and eventually we did find the, the, the treasure and get the treasure. I don't remember where it was, but because I was scarred. I, all I can remember is the mongoose. But computers kept getting smaller and smaller until everyone had one. And basically now my phone is a bigger computer than any of those computers that were, even the one that was huge, that was in just the whole big place that the gym would take up, your phone will now do more than that computer ever could do. And you carry it around in your pocket. That's kind of amazing. Technology is really cool when it's working. All right, that's your story for today. I hope you enjoy it. We didn't have too many cats in this one, which is kind of good. So I will talk to you the next time. I hope you are doing well. I hope you are all not having too many problems being at home learning. If you need any help, please contact your teachers. All of us would like to hear from you and all of us are here and ready to help you. I will talk to you next time. Bye-bye.